How to identify different dogworms. There are many different types of worms that can infect dogs. Those of most concern are roundworms, tapeworms, heartworms, hook, and whipworms. Whilst each type of worm has a slightly different life cycle, the dog's symptoms can be consistent with different types of worm infections. Thus, it is not possible to determine what sort of worm your dog has based on symptoms alone, and tests may be necessary. One, however, knowing the general symptoms, risks, and characteristics of different types of worms can help you treat and care for your canine friend. Identifying a worm infection. Be aware of risk factors for specific types of worms. Because worms can look very similar, one of the best ways to identify the type of parasite that is plaguing your dog is to understand the environmental or situational factors that most lead to each type of worms. Roundworms are often passed to puppies from a roundworm-infested mother because the eggs and larvae cross the placenta to infect the puppy in the womb, and eggs are also excreted in the mother's milk. Puppies should be wormed as a matter of routine. Tapeworms are caused by a dog's eating vermin already infected with tapeworm, or from fleas that contain tapeworm eggs. Thus, hunting dogs or dogs with a flea infestation are likely to pick up tapeworms. Hookworms and whipworms thrive in damp soil and the dogs most at risk are those kept on grass runs, especially in warm, humid conditions. These infections are more common in kenneled dogs that have access to communal grassy runs. Heartworm is spread by insects such as mosquitoes and is therefore endemic in certain areas where insects are more common. High-risk areas include the southeastern and midwestern United States and along the Atlantic coast. Lungworm is becoming more prevalent and is spread via fox feces, slugs, and snails. Contact with any of these is considered a risk factor. Watch for symptoms. Many of the symptoms of worm infections are general and nonspecific. Thus, it is not possible to diagnose what sort of worms a dog may have, based on symptoms alone. However, signs in a dog that has not been wormed recently should raise suspicion of worm infection and trigger an investigation into what sort of parasite is present. Look for worms in feces. Sometimes, even in an asymptomatic dog, you may see physical evidence of the worms in the dog's feces. If you are not completely confident in worm recognition, collect the worm in a screw top container and take it to the vet clinic for identification. Collecting a worm is far more helpful to your vet than describing it, since most worms have similar physical appearances to the naked eye. Identify gastrointestinal signs. Although life cycles vary, all worms will at some point travel through the gut. If the numbers are low, then the dog may not show any signs. However, when larger numbers colonize the bowel they can cause irritation to the lining which results in symptoms such as sickness, diarrhea, sometimes with mucus and or blood, poor appetite and weight loss. Collect a fecal sample. Worms either live in or transit through the gut, thus at certain stages in their life cycle evidence of infection is passed out in the dog's feces. In a heavy infestation you may see actual worms in the feces, but this is less common if mild infections. Instead, either eggs or larvae may be present in the feces, which is harder for the naked eye to spot. Scoop a sample of feces with a popsicle stick or a disposable spoon and place it in a clean, screw-top container that has a tight-fitting lid. Your vet can provide you with a container specific for this purpose if you don't have anything appropriate. Store the sample below 30 degrees Celsius and drop it off at the vet clinic when you can. The sample does not have to be especially fresh to have evidence of worms. If your vet asks for a pooled sample, you will take samples from the dog's stool once daily for three days in a row, placing them in the same collection container. This may be necessary for a suspected false negative result. The pooled sample reduces the risk of unreliable results. The vet may run the fecal analysis, which involves examining a smear of feces under the microscope to look for worm eggs or larvae, or she may send it to an outside lab for assessment. Ask your dog's vet for a blood test. Some worms that cause serious illness, such as lungworm or heartworm, can be diagnosed on a blood test. The veterinarian draws a small volume, 1 to 2 milliliters, from the pet to obtain as the test sample. A variety of tests are available but in practice an ELISA test is most common. The test looks for the presence of antibodies to the heartworm and causes a color change if positive. Most veterinarians in high-risk areas for heartworm require a yearly test as part of the dog's physical checkup before renewing or prescribing a monthly preventative treatment. Avoid contact with feces and worms. Some worms, such as roundworms, can be transferred from dogs to humans. Young children who become infected with roundworms may experience damage to their eyesight. Worms or feces infected with worms should be removed from children's play areas. Infected feces should be handled or collected with gloves. Always wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water after handling animal feces. <laughs>